there were always rumors about Michael Jackson's drug use. But now the court record and close friends have revealed what we didn't know or didn't want to know. A superstar desperate for help holed up in a rent -a mansion with a reported 40 gallons of propofol on order. Here's Chris Conley. <laughs> Michael Jackson's voice was a 20th century treasure on hit songs with the Jackson 5, appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show. And his solo work, like the classic Thriller. And at events, high-pitched and distinctive. Thank you for your warm and generous support. I love you very much. But until Dr. Conrad Murray's trial, we had never heard Michael like this. Hear the world, the lost children. Deep voiced, seemingly incoherent, and heavily sedated. This was Michael on May 10th, 2009, just weeks before his death, in a recording retrieved by police experts from the cell phone of Dr. Conrad Murray. These are the songs I've written because this recording and the trial itself would offer a chilling glimpse into Michael Jackson's secret world kept hidden for so long. And it would add detailed new information to the sad saga of Jackson and his use of powerful prescription drugs, a saga that would reach a tragic end on the morning of June 25, 2009, with an at-home dose of the hospital anesthetic that a coroner would find ultimately claimed his life. Mr. Jackson. Um, was receiving um, very inappropriate um, therapy in the home setting and uh, ultimately this cocktail was a recipe for disaster. But while it was barred as a topic during trial, Jackson's issues with prescription drugs and enabling doctors went back years as his friend, doctor and spiritual counselor Deepak Chopra was grimly aware. He was getting a number of prescriptions under a number of different names. Uh, this is a common thing amongst um, celebrity addicts because they demand what they want. Nobody knew that better or did more to try to stop it than this man, Frank Cassio, a friend of Michael's since childhood and eventually an employee who took it upon himself to keep enabling doctors at bay, as he describes in detail in his forthcoming book, My Friend Michael. You know, there were some doctors that were absolutely fantastic. And then you have these random people, just selfish, disgusting. And these doctors saw Michael as quick money, and they didn't care. As a teen, Cassio was on tour with Michael in Mexico City in 1993, when Jackson was swept off to rehab by an intervening Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth takes us uh, aside and says to us, we're going to get him out of the country after the show. He's going to go to London. Jackson would later release this videotaped statement to his fans. As you may already know, after my tour ended, I remain out of the country undergoing treatment for a dependency on pain medication. Years later, Cassio began working for Jackson, keeping Michael's stashes of Xanax, Percocet, or Valium out of Jackson's reach at nighttime. I didn't want them in his room. Why not? I just didn't want to take a chance. Jackson once made an ominous observation to his friend, telling Cassio, doctors can never really determine how much pain you're in. Jackson's way of easily manipulating his doctors. What kind of medicines are we talking about? The medicine that I was mainly concerned about was Demerol. Concerned enough that in November of 2000, Cassio says Michael called his dermatologist, Dr. Arnold Klein, who attempted to put Cassio's worries to rest. Even today, in an exclusive interview with ABC News' Jim Avila, Klein denies he ever got Jackson hooked on Demerol, but concedes he gave the pop star doses of the drug for painful facial treatments involving up to a thousand needle pricks. Did you have to give him uh, painkillers? On occasion, yes, but very low doses. I gave him, um, the last two times he saw me, I gave him 100 milligrams of Demerol. Now, can you get addicted to 100 milligrams of Demerol? 
I'm asking you, can you? I have no idea. You're the well, expert. He was never addicted to narcotics. And yet Cassio believed something was awry because of the effect he saw the drug have on Jackson. He was just angry and, and bitter and mad at the world and mad at everyone just taking advantage of him. He also recalls a house doctor at a New York City hotel, all too willing to provide Michael with meds. The house doctor was in awe and gave him more just to satisfy, you know, what, what Michael wanted. This time, the result was an angry showdown between Cassio and Jackson. I said, you don't want to end up like Elvis, do you? And he's like, I would never end up like Elvis. I don't have a problem. He, he was upset that I would even bring this up. The enabling doctors are in denial of their own uh, codependence. Frequently, they are very narcissistic. The stories we heard about different doctors prescribing drugs for Michael under a host of different aliases. It began for, for security reasons. It's not like Michael Jackson can go to the pharmacy. Hi, I'm here to pick up my prescription. In the end, Frank Cassio would face the same anguish that millions of families have known with a loved one who suffers from a drug dependency. Was Michael Jackson a drug addict? I would say he was a situational addict. His own family knew what was going on at times and they tried to help me. He wouldn't hear it. I've gotten in physical fights with his security to get to him. They kept him away like he was the president of the United States. How does it feel for you to know that this man was under the care of Dr. Conrad Murray for the last few months of his life? This guy, this doctor, manipulated a situation. Part of that situation was Jackson's craving for propofol, also known as Diprovan. He said to me, Deepak, you know, there's something that takes you right to the edge, to the valley of death, and then brings you back. Even some close to Jackson testified they wanted no part of administering that drug. You were not willing to give Michael Jackson the propofol or Diprovan or IV drip, correct? Absolutely not. I want to say, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Just two days after this recording, Murray would put in a staggering bulk order for propofol. Had you ever heard of any doctor using propofol in their practice of medicine to treat insomnia? I have never heard of it. There have been many great figures in music who have died from an accidental overdose, but only Michael Jackson had a doctor at his side. This guy, this guy was the worst. Frank Cassio says Michael Jackson once confided he feared he would die from a shot. Wouldn't be a gunshot that would claim his life. But he says no one would have ever thought it would be a shot of that drug propofol that claimed his life so prematurely.